I hope I do. The days and nights and days and nights and nights and days are becoming a blur lately because it's expanded in such a way that, you know, I rejoice in the fact that with technology we can become, in a way, now it's more than what most people think, but in a way we can become more connected in some ways less because in some ways we're connected with things that we might not know how to deal with digitally that affect us emotionally and then cause us to react spiritually. So in any digital format, a person needs to, and I know this isn't going to go very far because most people don't have a concept of how a cyber personality or cyber persona can affect them dramatically and that they become the reality of what they're creating in a cyber world or environment and how much it will change you and be either to the positive or can be used in a negative way. It's like a tool that we, you know, we have an air gun, you know, and an air gun is very positive because like being made into a nail gun, a nail gun can drive nails into two by fours or into any kind of product quickly, easily, and done right can accomplish a lot of work in a short period of time. But a nail gun, <laughs> if it's used incorrectly, could very easily drive a nail through your hand and kill you in other ways if it was done without proper realization of how to use it, where to use it, when to use it, what to use it for. The same thing is true with technology. Is a lot of times people don't understand how to adapt to all this modern information and technology that we have available to us. So they are overwhelmed and often formulate opinions and ideas about things without really understanding how to use it correctly. It takes time. You know, it's not a devotional teaching on technology, but it's a realization that be mindful that you are affected by everything you see, everything you hear, all that you read, and all that you apply to yourself and allow yourself to think about. So in emotionals, this helps to bring our focus back to God in a directional way. In a personal way, for me, it's God speaking to me. He sits here and he gets my attention <laughs> very quickly. And then I kind of just enjoy his presence while he's here and while I'm here. In Speak God, when the forecast is bleak, when the weather report says storms ahead, do you trust God or do you rent a tent? <laughs> it's hard to trust God when it's raining and you want sunshine. It's hard to trust God for cool but pleasant weather when it is in the mid-90s or in just five days, over 1,500 people are going to show up on the outdoor dedication of a new training center. And the extended six-day forecast is for lows in the 70s and highs in the 90s with scattered thundershowers. It's hard not to rent a tent when that's the weather report. But a tent would cost two or three thousand dollars and it would ruin the incredible worship service we had planned. With eight-foot banners coming down the aisles, bearing the different names and titles of our Lord as the audience worships Him in song. It's hard, isn't it, to trust God for anything when the forecast is contrary to what we want or feel or need. Maybe it's finances and the forecast is grim. Maybe it's restored relationship and the forecast is hopeless. Maybe it's a job and the forecast is uh-uh. <laughs> Maybe it's a report from the doctor and the forecast is oh my God. Whatever, it could be anything, and you know that you are totally helpless in this situation. You have done all that you can do, and you have no guarantee that it'll work, and that it will turn out right. So there you stand, wondering if the sun will ever shine, and if the breeze will ever drive the clouds away. What do you do? What can you do? Well, first you examine your heart to find out if there's any unconfessed sin in your life. 
If there is, you latch on to 1 John 1, 9, and you take it simply with a penitent spirit, with remorse, with sorrow, to the throne of grace. There you confess your sins, and he remembers what he promises. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. But then what do you do? There's only one thing, and it is all that is necessary. You cast all your cares on the one who cares for you. You cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. When the Apostle Peter wrote his first epistle, he told the hurting, suffering, persecuted Christians scattered throughout Asia Minor to stand firm in the grace of God. 1 Peter 5.12 Apparently some of them thought it was strange that suffering would come their way. So, among other wonderful things, Peter wrote, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you at the proper time, casting all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 6, and 7. Roll that burden, that care, that anxiety, that weight off your back, and onto his almighty shoulders. You are the sheep of his pasture, and the sheep are not burden-bearing animals. He cares for you. He cares for you. Have you got that? What concerns you is of the utmost concern for him. God has you in his hand, and his hand is a mighty hand. The mighty not only to save and to keep, but mighty to deliver. He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt with a mighty hand when they cried to him. Deuteronomy 9.26. See also Exodus 2.23-25. Can he not deliver you with this mighty hand? He cast hailstones on Israel's enemies and made the sun to stand still so that the sun stopped in the middle of the sky and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. There was no day like that. And when the Lord listened to the voice of the man, Joshua from 10, 13 through 14, have you asked God to hear your cry? Did he not promise to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus? Philippians 4, 19. Did he not say, seek ye first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you? Matthew 6, 33. God is immutable. He cannot change. He is absolute veracity. He cannot lie. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Therefore, you can boldly say, The Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Hebrews 6, 13, 6. God's hand is mighty, so mighty that he controls the wind. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens, and by his power he directed the south wind. Psalm 78:26. When Samuel called to the Lord, the Lord sent thunder and rain that day, 1 Samuel 12, 18. And when he wanted, he withheld rain or sent rain on one city, but not on another, Amos 4, 7. He is God. You get it? He is God. You have done what you can. I have done what I can. Now we must rest in him. God will do as he pleases, and none will thwart his hand, or his will, no matter what the forecast is. God is greater than forecasts. And by the way, it didn't rain on the day of my dedication. His throne sits above all the circumstances of life, and he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven among the inhabitants of the earth, and none can stay his hand or say unto him, What doest thou? Daniel 4.35 Cry to him. It is for your good and his glory, he will answer. If not, he won't, because he has planned, and what he has planned is better even though it may rain. The plans he has for you are plans of good and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Jeremiah 29.11 Who is among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant, that walks in darkness and has no light? Let him trust in the name of the Lord and rely on his God. You know, it just doesn't get any simpler than that. God said it. God will do it. God wondered. God has it. God's in control. Get with it. <laughs> I don't care what it is. You know, I face death, life, shotguns, people, you know, fists, anger, wrath, malice, spiritual deception, spiritual wickedness common wickedness, normal stuff, 
my own personal stuff, you name it. I mean, I've seen it all, you know, in my opinion. You know, there isn't anything that surprises me at all as far as that part of life is concerned because I only have to put one thing in all these concerns next to that. And it's God created everything. Okay, well, if he's that big, I ain't gonna worry about anything because he did everything and accomplished all of it and will accomplish all according to what he said he would do. And since he will, what am I worried about? <laughs> I mean, if I drop dead, so what? <laughs> I mean, come on. How real does it get? Gosh, you know, you can't get any more real than knowing that if your child, if your child was trained up in the Lord, that they will come back to the Lord. Or if your child is saved and dies, they're with the Lord. What better place could you be in? I mean, come on, let's get real. I would rather be with the Lord than without God in a world that's heading for hell in a handbasket. So what can we say to these things? Well, if God be for us, frankly, who can be against us? It's his will is being done, not mine.